Hello, and welcome to St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Parish. We are glad you're here to worship the Lord through the celebration of both his word and Eucharist. The ushers will not be taking up an offertory today. Instead, there are baskets at each of the worship space exit doors for you to place your weekly offering. Our celebrant today is Monsignor David Lesur, assisted by Deacon Ronnie Hoyt. Please stand and let us glorify our Heavenly Father by singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we honor the Holy Trinity as we always do every time we gather, every time we pray, make the sign of the cross, say the glory be to the Father. We honor today in a very special way, though, the entire church throughout the world, this blessed Trinity of Father, Son, and Spirit. Let us ask the Spirit the Father, the Son, for their 
for their petition, excuse me, for their mercy as we begin to celebrate this holy mass. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. pray. O God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful and majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
a reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up on Mount Sinai as the Lord commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. praise forever. Glory, glory, glory and praise forever. You are blessed, O Lord, God of all ancestors. Glory and praise forever. Exalted and praiseworthy forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed be your holy and glorious name. Glory and praise forever. Exalted and praiseworthy forever. Glory and praise forever. Glory. Glory, glory and praise forever. You are blessed in the temple of your holy glory. Glory and praise forever. Exalted and praiseworthy forever. Glory and praise forever. You are blessed on the throne of your kingdom. Glory and praise forever. Exalted and praiseworthy forever. Glory and praise forever. Glory, glory, glory and praise forever. You look into the depths from above the cherubim. Glory and praise forever. Exalted and praiseworthy forever. Glory and praise forever. You are blessed in the firmament of heaven. Glory and praise forever. Exalted and praiseworthy forever. Glory and praise forever. Glory, glory, glory and praise forever. Glory, glory, glory and praise forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. 
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not, believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's good to see you all here this morning. I I think our numbers have been growing in people coming back to church since the uh, bishop has allowed us to have public masses. So thank you for coming. And of course, we live stream for those who uh, cannot come or do not wish to come at this time. The the bishop has not imposed an obligation for us to come to mass, but it's wonderful that you're here because you really want to be. And for those who uh, do not want to come out of their homes to uh, attend mass, that is perfectly fine. So we'll keep you posted on what the bishop's guidelines are throughout this uh, epidemic. Anyway, today we honor uh, the Holy Trinity, as we always do anytime we pray, anytime we gather for Mass, the Trinity is always with us. There is an old uh, medieval saying about theology. I want to share that with you today. I'll give you a little bit of theology about the, the Holy Trinity. I can't explain it to you because it's a deep mystery. But that doesn't mean we can't think about it and talk about it and pray about it. So anyway, the old definition of theology, which came to us from the Middle Ages, uh, from people like uh, St. Anselm, St. St. Thomas Aquinas, and so on, it's faith seeking understanding. We believe. We believe in God. We want to try to understand that better. It doesn't mean we can explain it all the time. But if we can at least better understand what we believe and why we believe it, that's theology. So all of us, in some way or another, engage in theology. Anytime you try to explain something to your children, for example, about why Jesus died for us or what uh, uh, the Holy Spirit represents and so on. So theology is faith-seeking understanding. What do we want to understand about the Holy Trinity? There's a lot we can understand without explaining it. For example, the creed that we say every Sunday and every holy day of obligation is Trinitarian in its formulation. We believe in God, the Father Almighty. We believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, who was born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. And that's a theological statement. Consubstantial just means that God the Father and God the Son are of the same essence. They are equally God. And then further down, it says, We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. So we believe in God, who has no beginning and no end. We believe in His Son, who was eternally begotten of the Father. It means there was never a time when the Son did not exist. 
And the same is true of the Holy Spirit. He proceeds from the Father and the Son from eternity. So that's what we know. Now, how did we get to know that much? How was the creed developed uh, over a period of time and with very great difficulty? Uh, for example, the first 300 years of the church's existence, we, there was a lot of, I suppose, misunderstanding about who the Son was. We, we knew who Jesus was, but you know, we also believe that Jesus, as the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, uh, always existed but became a human being at one point in history, 2,000 years ago. So the Son has two natures. He's God. He has one, he's only one person, but he's got two natures, uh, human and divine. So anyway, the creed tells us uh, that in the first 300 years or so, there was a lot of misunderstanding about who the Son was and who God was and who the Spirit was. So in the year 325, the Council of Nicaea, which is in modern-day Turkey, the Council of Nicaea tried to hammer out just who the Son was because there was a priest in Alexandria, Egypt, named Arius who was a heretic. And I think he was sincere. He was simply trying to understand better who the Son was. And he said, you know, the Son of God didn't always exist. He became a man, and he was adopted by his Father, but he didn't always exist as some people believe. Now, we say that's not right. And so in the Council of Nicaea, uh, saints like Athanasius, they fought this out, and they, they defeated the wrong, uh, the, the wrong belief that the Son of God didn't always exist. He did always exist. He's of the same essence of the Father. He and the Father are one. They're different persons, but they're one essence, one, one substance. This all sounds very deep, I know. I don't expect you to remember it unless you want to. But I just want you to understand what the church has gone through to give us the faith that we have today in the Trinity, in the Son, in the Spirit, in the Father. So anyway, the Council of Nicaea decided and proclaimed that the Son of God is equal to the Father. He always existed, co-eternal with the Father, and that the Spirit proceeds from them both. Now... You know, given what they had at the time, the scriptures, the letters of St. Paul, the gospels, etc., that's like a piece, it's like a puzzle. And all the pieces are over here. And you, you got to put the puzzle together. So that's what the Council of Nicaea began to do, begin to put the pieces of the puzzle of who the Son of God is, who the Spirit is, who the Father is. So if you notice in the creed that we're going to say in a few minutes, the least amount of space is given to the Father because we know who He is. The most amount of space is given to the Son. All kinds of words about the Son, you know. Then a little less about the Spirit. But thank goodness the theologians who were trying to understand their faith were willing to fight this out against the heretics of the time. A few years later, in the year three, three, excuse me, 381, we had the, another council, the Council of Constantinople. Again, the same problem was there. They had to still fight about who the Son is, who the Spirit is in relation to the Father and all that. So the creed that we say today is called the Nicene Creed, but it's really a combination of the Nicene and the Constantinople Creed. We put them together. So we have what we do. And thank goodness we can say that creed with total confidence that this is the truth handed down by God to the church. And it was the church, the Catholic church, and its bishops and its saints who fought this out, who figured it out with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So anytime you want to tell a friend who might not be Christian or who might be uh, from some other religious group, you say, here's what we believe. Hand them a copy of the creed. You say, this is what we believe. We believe more than just this, but this is basic. This is truth. Now, Okay, that's theology. What does it have to do with us? This is the key point because all that I just told you about theology, about the creeds and about the, the councils, etc., that gave us our faith today through the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the church, what does it have to do with us? It has to do with the fact that God 
is three persons in one God. There's only one God. But in God, there are three persons. They're all equal. They're all different. But they're just one God. Now, I can't explain that to you because it's a mystery that is the deepest of all mysteries that we believe. But we know this, that God is love. And love has to express itself. Love has to give. If you don't love, you don't give. But if you do love, you do give. And God is perfect love. And God is perfect giving. So what, did, what happened uh, in Genesis, for example? In the beginning, God created the world. The Spirit hovered over the waters. And God made a man and God made a woman. Here's where the love comes in. God didn't need the world. He didn't need us. But because he's love, because he wants to give, he created someone to share his life with. So I like to describe it this way. A trinity of Father, Son, and Spirit were dancing in a perfect circle. And there's an old Greek word that describes that. It's called perichoresis. Chorisis means dancing. That's where you get the word choreography. Peri means around. So they're dancing around in this perfect harmony from all eternity. And yet they wanted to share that that harmony, they wanted to share that love with someone else. So they created us. And so you and I have been invited to that dance. You and I are meant to dance in harmony with God, with the Father, Son, and Spirit. And you know, we don't always do it very well. Adam and Eve left the dance. They departed, they sinned, they, they left the garden. But God wanted them back. And so he sent his son in this marvelous plan he sent his eternal son into our world to become one of us, a human being, like us in all things but sin, so he could bring us back to the dance. And if you read the New Testament, in fact, the whole Bible, the key to understanding the Bible is that, that God wanted us back, that we have sinned, we wandered, we have offended God, but our offending God did not make him quit loving us. And so he said, I've, I've got a plan. I want to send my son who's equal to me, into the world to become a human being who would someday die. And that's the plan. And if you read the Bible, that is the key to understanding what the Bible is all about. It's the story of God's love for us and his plan of salvation, bringing us back into the dance. And so we're in the dance. When you're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you're brought into the life of God. You're a beloved son or daughter. You're adopted by God and you're loved infinitely. Yeah, we sin. We sometimes step out of the dance. We get out of step, you know. We miss a step here and there, and we'll fall down. God gets us right back up. He forgives us when we ask him to, and we get back in the dance. So maybe any one of us here in the church today might not be right in step. You know, we're not perfect, but God loves us. Our love is not perfect. But if we love God, if we try to give back to God, Return some of that love to him. That's all he asks. You know, imperfect contrition is enough to be forgiven. Perfect contrition is better. But that's all he asks. So you and I are invited to this marvelous eternal dance. And am I talking about heaven, going to heaven after we die? Yes, I am. But I'm also talking about right now because the dance is going on right now, and you and I are part of it. So I can't understand all that. I can't understand that kind of love because I'm so imperfect. And yet it's true. And so our faith in God's love for us seeks understanding. It seeks experience. It seeks to, to live it. And that's what he asks of us. So as we honor the Trinity today, uh, be grateful that you've been invited to be a part of the life of the Trinity, eternal life, a joyful life. And right now we can't fully experience it. It's difficult sometimes, but, you know, someday... We're going to experience the fullness of it all. So until that time, let's be faithful. Let's try to uh, remember the dance steps and always stay close to our God. So Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Spirit, instill in us the life that you intended us to have from the very beginning. Let us live that life with joy and with repentance when necessary. And let us continue our dance with you until we see you face to face in heaven. Amen.
Let us now rise. <clears throat> Let us profess the faith that has been given to us. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Assured of the love and compassion of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we call to mind our needs and the needs of all the world. For shepherds in our church, that they may listen to those in their flock, guiding them with humility and grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governmental leaders to recognize their role of responsibility in caring for all people entrusted to their care, especially in the midst of this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to racism and for healing of the deep racial wounds in our society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists and researchers and their assistants and sponsors working to develop tests, secure treatments, and create vaccines for COVID-19, and for the caretakers, nurses, and doctors who care for those who are sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the love of God poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit may serve to bring peace and comfort to all those who suffer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the Jose and Veronese Cruz family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed, especially Joan Beaker, Juan Nassif, Lucia Valle Calderon, and Juliana Laren be with our Savior in paradise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially those affected of COVID-19, as well as for Martha Vasquez, Jose Maria Calderon, and the Lamas and Calderon family, for our private intentions, and for all those written in the Paris Book of Prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as our triune God, you revealed yourself to your people through wisdom, truth, and love. Would you take delight in the human race and pour out your love into our hearts. Hear now the prayers of those you love. In the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Fire fall, let the fire fall. Ho, 
Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, purify my heart. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, purify my heart. Holy Spirit, purify my heart. Holy Spirit, purify my heart. Come, Holy Spirit, let the fire fall. Come, Holy Spirit, let the fire fall. Acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our years we give all of his children. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing the one true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance, their equality and majesty. For this is praise that the angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving thanks, he broke, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent de Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, who are departed brothers and sisters into all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. The Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now. Cup of Life is poor. Come share the supper of the Lord. This is the bread of God coming down from earth, giving life to to all the world. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast is poor. Come share the supper of the Lord. I am the living spring of eternal not thirst again. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine.
precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken. is poor. Come share the supper of the Lord. All those who feed on me have their life in me. As I have my life in the living God. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here in the pair the feast divine. is poor. Come share the supper of the Lord. Oh, praise to you, O Christ, present in this feast. In this bread we share body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now. Cup of life is Share the supper of the Lord. Take the bread, children. Take the bread, take the bread, children, take the bread, for the Father of us all is the one who gives the call. Take the bread, children, take the bread. Bless the bread. the bread, children, bless the bread, for the blessing of the Lord comes in bread and in the word. Bless the bread, children, bless the
Let us pray. May receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and divided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello, my name is Jim Brillante, and these are today's announcements. This week we will go back to our regularly daily mass schedule. Monday, 8 a.m. in English, Tuesday, 8 a.m. in English, and 5.30 p.m. in Spanish. Wednesday, 8 a.m. in Spanish, and 5.30 p.m. in English, and 8 a.m. Thursday and Friday in English. Beginning tomorrow, the daily masses will not be live streamed. However, we will continue to live stream the Sunday 10 a.m. and 12 noon masses. Our confession schedule this week is as follows. Tuesday, June 9th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. and Thursday, June 11th beginning at 4 p.m. We will not have confessions on Saturday morning. Instead, we will be celebrating first Union Masses Saturday morning. Please keep these children in your prayers. Next weekend we will celebrate the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. The Blessed Sacrament will be exposed in the daily Mass Chapel on Saturday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and in the worship space Saturday evening from 6 p.m. until Sunday morning at 6 a.m. The Blessed Sacrament will then be moved back to the Daily Mass Chapel on Sunday morning at 6 a.m. and will remain for adoration until 10 p.m. Sunday evening. Please make plans to join us for an hour of adoration during this weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. What I have to say now is a little bit embarrassing, but uh, some of you have been getting so-called texts from me about a gift card. I didn't send them. So please don't respond to them, just erase them. Uh, this has happened before, and it happens once in a while that a pre, even the bishop, has his name has been used in, in these kinds of scams. So if you've got something supposedly from me asking for a gift card, where you're supposed to scratch the number off and put it on the phone, don't do that. It's, um, it's a scam. Now, on a more serious note, uh, given the... Uh, you know that the riots have been going on in our country because of the terribly unfortunate death of George Floyd uh, back at the end of May. Uh, he was choked to death, more or less. Uh, you might want to call it that, as an officer knelt on his neck until he died. Uh, there have been a lot of riots going on as a result. We've had demonstrations in our own northwest Arkansas, Fayetteville, Bentonville, and also Rogers. And sometimes they get a little bit out of hand. So. But what we want to do is we want to respond to that in a prayerful way. So please listen to this um, little announcement that I have. Given the crisis our country is facing at this time, on Tuesday, Bishop Taylor issued a public statement on the topic of racism. Some of you might be too young to remember the struggle for civil rights, and all of us can benefit from a refresher on just how crucial this struggle is for anyone who would consider themselves a Christian. Bishop's statement can be found on our website and on our Facebook account. May we continue to pray for the end of racism and for healing in the deep racial wounds in our country. So, you're invited to join us this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. here in the church for a service of prayer and reflection based on Dr. Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail in response to the racism in our country. The letter may easily be found online in preparation for the prayer service. The service will be bilingual. It will take place here in our church. It's called The Letter from the Birmingham Jail. Martin Luther King, as you know, was jailed many times because of his activity as a uh, person in favor of race relations in a very nonviolent way. He was a, a Christian man, a, a minister of the word, and if you read his letter, you'll see how eloquent he is sitting in a small jail cell in Birmingham, Alabama, writing to his fellow ministers in that area. It's an uncomfortable letter for those of us who are ministers and priests, but it behooves all of us to read it. So a letter from a Birmingham jail, you can find it online. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in His holy The king is exalted on high. He is exalted. The king is exalted on high. I will praise him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise him. 